previously during the investigation. Okay then, Zack. Let's pay Harry another visit and get to the bottom of all this. And that one. And that one too. All red seeds. Welcome, York. The killings 50 years ago. There is something about it that you won't find written in those files. The people were attacking and killing each other, rampaging as though insane. Quite a story. York, I told you. It's nothing more than local folklore. What does that all mean? It's called the legend of the new raincoat killer. York, we found Thomas. Zack. Okay, so it's not bonus footage. It's still part of the main feature. Perpetrator is exactly who I thought it was. York, Emily is here. Time to say goodbye then. York, no situation is reversible. Didn't you know that? Everyone, everything proceeds along a path preordained by fate. Goodbye, then. I wonder who'll be the next person to open this door. Well, whoever that person is will be the one to decide your fate. Hello, this is Conservative Cat, and welcome to episode 32 of my playthrough of Deadly Premonition. We are in the middle of episode 4, and we are playing, as you can see, as Emily. Emily has one gun, um, her 9mm Sheriff handgun, which has a stronger damage attribute than York's 9mm. We can't shoot through that metal grating, so just ignore it. Um, we are climbing up the clock tower right now. Um, there are shadows on every level. Which, I guess this means that the shadows are not in York's head. They are actually real. <sighs> I, I wonder what exactly they're supposed to be. Anyways, her handgun, you only have her handgun, but it's its not as powerful as, your, as York's magnum, however... Oh, that's creepy. Um, she... Instead, it has 19 shots per clip. Well, magazine, I guess I should say. Um, and it's the shadows are also weaker. Otherwise, oh, I'm very happy that Emily is a capable protagonist. That she is as good in a fight, if not better, than York is. She can't hold her breath, which is... Works against her some, but fortunately, the game, uh, this level is tiered. She has, she can run forever. She doesn't have a um, heart rate bar. Uh, really, all she's missing is she seems to have a bit smaller health bar, and she doesn't have York's arsenal. But if she, 
If she had York's arsenal, she'd be able to fight right alongside him, no problem. She also has the laser sight. Overall, Emily is a formidable opponent. A formidable protagonist. She starts off with a small amount of healing items, which we will be able to increase as we get through the level. I pick up these shells thinking, you know, maybe there'll be a shotgun, but there isn't. Um, the only weapon we get is her handgun, which is all we really need. Every couple levels has a shadow. Sometimes they have shadows on the landing, sometimes they have like this one, or sometimes they have fully blown floors every couple of landings, which have a group of shadows and normally some explosive barrels. Shooting the explosive barrels, of course, will save you a bit of time in the slaughter. But Emily is certainly capable of taking them out with just her gun. Oh, Since she can't hold her breath any, having them teared off like this really helps. I, I wonder, since Emily can see these, if Thomas can also see them now. Since Thomas is in here somewhere, uh, presumably at the top of the uh, clock tower. Remember, the clock tower is where the purple fog started. And the shadows only seem to emerge when the purple fog is about. So obviously there's a connection there. She also seems to get a bit more money than York does for headshots. 31. That That's not what York was making, I don't think. I think he was making like 25, maybe 30. I don't know, it's pretty interesting. Emily seems to run a bit quicker, or maybe it's just because she takes uh, shorter strides than York does, and she doesn't lean into it as far as he does. Where it seems like she's running faster, even though she's running about the same speed. We got quite a few more floors to go, it looks like. Well, we can't shoot him. We can shoot his buddy over here. And it looks like, yeah, he's armed with a gun. He's a gun shadow. There is no reason you should take any damage while climbing this tower. You have plenty of cover and plenty of obstacles between you and them. Be careful not to shoot those, obviously, because you'll just hurt yourself. Fortunately, the shadows don't seem to respond, unless you're unless you've already shot them once. That one back there has a shotgun. Oh, they both have shotguns. Okay. We can we should be able to nail it from here though without suffering any damage ourselves. That's such a satisfying sound. This floor is pretty much cleared. Yeah, it's cleared. The shadow sound we heard are from above. It was a door. 
We are nearing the top of the tower. Near the top of the tower. Well, there's gonna be a showdown, I think. Here we can rest up, we can save, and most importantly, there is an infinite spawning med kit right there, medium. Um, any items you find on Emily will carry over to York. Let's go ahead and grab all these, just in case we run into something pretty nasty. Even though York won't be able to take them, they will go straight to his, uh... They will go straight to his toolkit rather than just being thrown out. Okay, let's save. Okay, let's save and proceed upward. Okay, and after that, let's get back and check upstairs. Looks like we have some more floors. Gears. Oh, these are the gears for the, uh, clock tower. You sure took your time. Thomas, you've got nowhere to run now. Just surrender yourself. Emily, I've been waiting for you. Where's York? Is he okay? <laughs> He's quite the handsome one, isn't he? I liked him the moment I saw him. He likes someone else, of course. Who do you think that is? Hmm? I'm asking you if he is okay. Answer me. Oh, yes. He is handsome. But me and Carol, we love not him, but a different person. My lovely G. Cut the crap. Do you know what you're doing? Why, yes, I do. All too well. Far better than you do, I think. You know nothing about yourself, nor this town. Please, don't make me shoot you. <laughs> You're a silly, sad little woman. We're heading for devastation. All of us. And no one can stop it. <laughs> Oh, Thomas, you're sick, but there's still time. We can get you help. I'll help you. You're too kind, Emily. As kind as a goddess. That's why he likes you. This town is soiled, and only you are shining in it. That's right, Thomas. Let's just leave here together. It was so much better back then. We had so much fun. Emily, that was before you came. I won't let you have him.
you filthy pig! pig, 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 pig. <laughs> But you weren't expecting that boss fight, were you? <laughs> yep. We are fighting our first boss fight of the game versus Thomas as Emily. Um, this... He hops around from gear to gear for the most part. It is much easier to hit him here when he's on this gear. The one closest to you. He'll randomly shoot at you, which you'll be prompted to dodge. Um, auto locking is almost is almost useless here. It helps a bit on this closest one, but farther away, you're pretty much relying on luck. Um, his shots are pretty easy to dodge. It's always B. Every once in a while, he will shoot the hook. You'll be <laughs> yeah, you'll be put in a sequence like that where you have to dodge the hook. Um, you'll have to put in a sequence of three, which changes. And if you screw up even on one of them, you will, um, you will take damage. If you succeed, Emily will roll out of the way. However, you can also just simply run out of the path, and you will not have to dodge and can keep... Uh, taking pot shots at him. There we go. No problem. Just keep track, watch your health, and just be patient when it comes to shooting him. As long as you are paying attention to the quick time events, you should have no problem dodging. You can just focus on shooting. Take this! Shooting him on these other gears is almost unnecessary. He doesn't take too many shots to actually die, it's just he's pretty hard to hit. Take this. <laughs> I'm not letting you go, Emily. Take this. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. <laughs> Take this. So, any guesses on who Lovely G is? I don't think anyone's guessing at this point. It pretty much has to be George. Oh, here we go. Perfect. There are two times when locking on actually helps. You won't have it your way. I won't let you take him. I'll show you how serious I am. I'll turn you into hamburger meat. This is the second phase. He will occasionally hop on a hook and swing towards you while riding it. This is by far the best time to wail on him with gunshots because locking on him will work really well. I'll display that here when he jumps onto the hook. However, you also have to keep minding your dodging. He'll also spam these hooks, shooting hooks at you a lot more. So you have to be careful. And hopefully you load it up on some med kits in case you screw up like I just did. But we have a pretty good buffer, four more medium sized hit med kits, and we're about. Oh, he still has half his HP left. Yeah, here we go. This is the best time to score shots on him. Okay. Um, even though you'll be spammed, you'll be hit with attacks a lot. Looking pathetic, Emily. You'll be prompted a lot for fighting, uh, for dodging. However, no, he's not here yet. I was nowhere near that. I should not have made a prompt. Pretty much the only time you can even get a spot to actually hit him is when he's on the hook himself. Because he'll keep shooting the hooks down at you. 
Did you hear that beeping sound? It sort of plays that whenever he's about to hop on a hook. And check this out. See how see how see how closely it's locking onto him? He's almost dead. And now he is dead. Well, it looks like we could we looks like we got Thomas hook line and sinker. <laughs> I guess you could say we hung him out to dry. <laughs> I guess we weren't fishing for clues on that one. <laughs> um I, I don't know that much about fishing, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um we have control of York, and it looks like I was wrong. His health bar is the same length as Emily, so... Really, Emily is actually better than he is. Sans York's, um... Ability to hold his breath and his better arsenal of weaponry, obviously. Also, York has sort of the, um... The whole profiling thing. Being mildly psychic helps a bit. Speaking of which, Willie seems a bit smart, doesn't he? Like, 
Oh, wait. I have a pretty smart dog myself, but I, I doubt she could do anything like that. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe police dogs are, can, are able to do that sort of stuff, but... I mean, he's not police dog, he's... He's Kaysen's dog. There we go. Hey! York! Are you okay? I'm fine. Got to spend some quality time with Zack. I heard gunshots. Did you get our man? York. Thomas is dead. I shot him. He tried to kill me. Thomas. I suppose that this is the fate you talked about. But Emily, what about the murderer? I just told you I had to shoot Thomas. Thomas's actions may have surprised you, I understand that. But our job is to catch the killer, isn't it? You didn't let the killer get away. York, are you saying that Thomas was not responsible for the murders? What? That makes no sense. Emily, are you out of your mind? Thomas was certainly neck deep in this. But he didn't kill the girls. He has concrete alibis for all three murders. He also doesn't have the reverse peace symbol on his back. These are basic facts that for sure you haven't forgotten. Then who? I need you to be strong, Emily. If Thomas is not the killer, then there is only one other possibility. The only one with free access to the department files and doesn't have an alibi at the time of the killings. Love G himself. George? George is the killer? And since when did you start thinking this? I wasn't sure to start with, but you saw the pictures, right? In that secret room in Carol's bar. That was when I became 100% positive. But George didn't have the tattoo on his back. Ah, oh, right. He doesn't have a tattoo on his back. But there is a pattern there. What do you mean? Emily, I'm not saying that the pattern was the tattoo. Remember what Harry said. There isn't a single thing that can maintain its shape for eternity. And George's back is a perfect example. Hey, you two. Could you explain this so I can understand what's going on? Emily, come in. Emily here. I've rescued Agent York from the clock tower. Thomas is dead. I was forced to shoot him. York is a little weak, but we're heading back to the department now. Emily, George is a friend of yours, isn't he? Yes. Then what we are about to do is going to be tough to deal with. Are you willing to go through with this? York, I'm Deputy Sheriff. This might be a small town, but I take pride in that. It's my duty to make sure that we catch all the bad guys in Greenville. Even if it means facing an end that I would never have hoped for. Okay, then let's get moving. This case is going to end at the Sheriff's Department. This is madness! Willie, come on, let's go with him. Chickening out now would be like leaving after eating the appetizers. That brings us to the end of episode 
32 of my playthrough of Deadly Premonition. Um, if you're wondering, George is... Tom George doesn't have an alibi. George was alone when the murders were discovered, whereas Thomas with was with us. So, it's not unfounded. Anyways, thank you for watching, and have a good day.